Hey all and welcome back for another Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be traveling through a prominent 150-acre neighborhood on the west side of Indianapolis, Indiana that sits atop grounds that once hosted a massive state hospital, from which the administration building and the old pathology building, which is literally the oldest surviving pathology laboratory in the U.S., are still standing, and where local legend claims the restless souls of all those who have perished on site still roam. Are you ready to brave the ghosts of Central State? village. Historically, this old expanse first played home to the Indiana State Hospital for the Insane, a psychiatric treatment facility that, at the time of its opening, consisted of one singular large brick building atop 100 acres. In 1889, this facility would be renamed as the Central Indiana Hospital for the Insane and would begin focusing on the state's central counties. In 1926, it was renamed again as Central State Hospital, and by 1928, the old campus would accommodate around 3,000 patients. By 1948, Central State had expanded to include male and female dorms, a medical hospital to treat illness amongst patients, a farm colony and other occupational therapies, a chapel, bakery, amusement hall, cannery, a firehouse, and impressive grounds, gardens, and fountains. In 1969, in an effort to better showcase the hospital's history alongside the evolution of psychiatric care and medicine, the old pathology building was transformed into the Indiana Medical History Museum. And not a moment too soon, as just a year later, in 1970, most of the site's original structures were declared unsound and unsafe, resulting in their demolitions and replacement by newer facilities. Central State would continue to function for a time until mounting claims of neglect and abuse, coupled with financial difficulties, would ultimately lead to its closure in 1994. As of 2007, remaining structures sat unused and had become run down, with the city acquiring the property from the state and starting redevelopment of the grounds as commercial and residential plots. And in 2014, the former admin building, which was constructed in 1938, was turned into student housing called Central State Mansion. In the present, the museum remains open to the public, with the majority of the old campus now acting as the Central State Village neighborhood. Abundant paranormal activity has been reported across the whole of the expanse and is believed to result from the many loss to medical mistreatment and malpractice. While phenomena experienced at the museum itself has been chalked up to the multiple autopsies performed within, as well as to spirits connected to its various artifacts, some of which even include preserved skeletons and organs. To make matters worse, a bulk of the patients who died at Central State were dumped in either mass or unmarked graves, many of which that were later disturbed, uncovered, or destroyed completely. But reports of ghostly happenings on campus aren't a new trend, with witness accounts beginning in the hospital's earliest days, when staff, patients, and security guards documented doors opening and closing on their own, inexplicable power outages and electronic malfunctions, alarms sounding for no reason, and spectral silhouettes sighted within locked rooms. One more popular story tells of a patient named Al, who mysteriously vanished from a non-secure ward and was missing for nearly a week. It's said that one day, a female patient who was making her way down a stairwell in the dorms saw and began to follow Al, who stayed just ahead of her, just out of reach. On this chase, she was led disturbingly to the long-deceased body of the man himself, and also to the realization that Al she was following was nothing more than a ghost. To date, many visiting Central State Village have described unearthly shrieks and moans heard in the distance, footsteps from empty rooms, strange orbs of light that float around the grounds, and pale, phantom faces that materialize in windows, mirrors, and other transparent or reflective surfaces. Informal investigations of the property have yielded high EMF levels, chilling EVPs, abnormal battery death rates, and orbs and mists in the backgrounds of photography, and encounters with both shadowy figures and the full-bodied apparitions of patients and medical staff are all but common. Some of the site's most extreme supernatural activities purported to occur within the basement of the museum, where the former hospital's most violent patients were once held, and those who have ventured the demence have reported tortured, disembodied screams, along with the unnerving sensations of being touched, grabbed, scratched, or even hit by invisible hands. 
Lastly, reported across Central State and confined to no area in particular are instances in which televisions turn on, off, or even flick through channels on their own. Accounts of objects going missing and turning up later in odd places, and a feeling usually experienced in the middle of the night by current residents that someone or something unseen is lurking about their rooms. Thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Good night.